everyone and I'm here with the first tutorial and I wanted to bring up a very basic topic which is which we talk about in molecular cell biology and other classes and I believe if you understand this topic you're gonna be able to understand many other topics that you learn in medical school and what I want to talk about is the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes and you may be asking, what am I talking about? Well, prokaryotes, eukaryotes are types of cells. And as you know from basic biology, every living thing or organism is made of cells. It's the basic building block of every living organism. So if you understand the main characteristics of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, you will be able to understand why these organisms or how these organisms work and function. So the first thing I want to talk about, actually something that medical students have to deal with all the time, especially in anatomy, is word origin. And I want to go over the, the origins of the words prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And I believe with that, I'm going to be help, helping you understand why or the main characteristics of these two cells, the main difference between these two types of cells. And the first word I, uh, word I want to talk about is karyos. This has a Greek origin and means kernel. And actually, in biology, we use this word root to refer to the nucleus of a cell. It's kind of shaped like a kernel, as you can see. Now, in pro, that we see in prokaryotes, this word or this word uh, root actually means before. So, before a nucleus. This, these types of cells actually do not have a real nucleus. You, in eukaryotes, this word means true or good, which means that these cells possess a true nucleus. Main difference here, key difference, pro, no nucleus, or before a nucleus, and eukaryotes uh, possessing a true nucleus. First comparison I want to do is based on the organisms where you can find prokaryotes and the organisms where you can find eukaryotes. So in prokaryotes, actually, you find in monocellular organisms called bacteria, probably have heard about. And the two, let's say, subtypes of bacteria, archaeobacteria and eubacteria, Sure, it's very familiar to you, of course, uh, the, the, these organisms. Uh, I can give you examples like Staph or Staphylococcus aureus. Probably heard about infections related to these. And E. coli and etc. In eukaryotes, you find in monocellular and multicellular organisms such as protists, fungi, I'm sure these are familiar to you. You've heard them in basic biology in high school, I'm sure. And plants. And of course, animals, which we include humans as well, are comprised of eukaryotic cells. In terms of nucleus, if we look at these two types of cells, we will see that the prokaryotes actually, they do not have a nucleus or a defined nucleus. It's absent. They do have an area called a nucleoid. This area is where you can actually see DNA or where DNA is located. You can see it here. I'm showing you right here. And in eukaryotes, you will see a very defined um, nucleus, so it's present, and this is where the genetic material is separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane. So DNA is separated from the cytoplasm. This is very important. And you can actually see it, I'm going to show you here, this area, this green area here, this is the nucleus. This is representing the nucleus in eukaryotes. Next step is to compare the sizes of these two types of cells. So size, and I'm going to talk about diameters as well. Um, the scale here is not perfect because one is definitely smaller than the other. But in prokaryotes, we're looking at 
between 1 and 10 micrometers. And in eukaryotes, these cells can go from or range from 10 to 100 micrometers. So you can definitely see that prokaryotes will be smaller and eukaryotes will be larger cells. In terms of metabolism, we can see also some differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And in prokaryotes, we see that these types of cells are able to be anaerobic and in some cases aerobic. So they can be both anaerobes and aerobes. Meanwhile, eukaryotes, they can only be aerobes. Now it's time to discuss the genome of prokaryotes and the genome of eukaryotes. And by genome, it's the organism's hereditary information, the way it's organized. So, and in prokaryotes, we see that the DNA, you probably heard about, and we're going to talk about more in later tutorials, it's actually circular in prokaryotes. Another part or important information is that the DNA is a so-called naked DNA. And by naked DNA, I don't mean that it doesn't have clothes. It's actually because it's not associated to proteins. Some proteins called histones that we see in eukaryotes, and we're going to discuss later. And also that between 1 and 5, 10 to the power of 6, base pairs are found in prokaryotic um, genome. Another important information, very important, is that 60% of this DNA is actually coding DNA. It's, uh, how should I put this? Uh, it's actually DNA that will become proteins or will be converted, let's say, into proteins. So 60% in bacteria or in E. coli. Going to eukaryotes, uh, I'm already writing that we see linear DNA, protein-associated uh, DNA with the, those histones, and we call it chromatin. And another thing that I want to mention about eukaryotic genome is that only 1% to 2% of the DNA is called a coding DNA. And this is for humans. So only 1% to, uh, to 2% of your DNA will be coded into proteins. Now, when we talk about extrachromosomal DNA, we are talking about DNA that is not or does not belong to the main core DNA that codes for the main proteins in cells. So, and we can find in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes extrachromosomal DNA. In prokaryotes, we're going to find these molecules called plasmids. These are small, double-stranded, and circular uh, DNA molecules, and they're able to actually replicate separately from or independently from the chromosomal DNA, the main chromosomal DNA. Um, and these molecules are actually very important in research. You can actually read about and we're going to discuss them in later, tu later tutorials. In eukaryotes, you find extrachromosomal DNA in two main organelles, mitochondria and the chloroplast implants. Mitochondria, as you probably heard about, is the organelle that is responsible for the energy of the cell. And chloroplasts are mainly found in plants, and they do contain extrachromosomal DNA. When you go from DNA to proteins, you have to go through several steps. And these steps are called transcription and translation. We're going to talk about them in a different tutorial at a different time, but you can read about them. And in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, they're done in different ways. In prokaryotes, they're coupled, actually. They're done, in a way, at the same time, transcription and translation. And with this, there's a formation of a polysome complex, which you're going to learn about it later. But important to know, couple transcription and translation in prokaryotes. Meanwhile, in eukaryotes, you see that transcription 
actually happens in the nucleus. They're done in separate places. Well, in, in transcription, you're going to see that it's going to happen in the nucleus. And in translation, it's going to happen in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now we're going to talk about the membranes that surround or that enclose these types of cells. And in prokaryotes, we see two types of membranes, let's call. And one is lipoprotein membrane, which is comprised of a phospholipid bilayer. We can see here, this it's this red, red area here that I, I drew in my kind of childish drawing, but it, it kind of helps you, hopefully. But this is a phospholipid bilayer. And also with associated proteins. So there are some proteins there mixed with that phospholipid bilayer. And also we see in prokaryotes or in bacteria, we see something called a cell wall, which um, is actually called a peptidoglycan wall, which means that it's comprised by polysaccharides and peptides. And this is shown here by this green area. This is the cell wall of my bacteria. In eukaryotes, you find one lipoprotein membrane. Well, of course, similar to the one found in prokaryotes, which is comprised of phospholipid bilayer and associated proteins. And you can see here, it's this red area here that encloses the whole cell. And this is my membrane. We talked about before membranes and membranes, the main membranes that separate the internal environment of a cell or the cytoplasm from the external environment. Um, and these are the main membranes. And now there are other types called intracellular membranes. And these actually enclose um, organelles. And they're absent in prokaryotes because you cannot find organelles in prokaryotes. But in eukaryotes, you find lots of organelles that have different kinds of functions and they're all enclosed by membranes. So these membranes are called intracellular membranes and they're found in ER or endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, in lysosomes and mitochondria. These are just examples that I'm writing down of uh, organelles found in eukaryotes and they're all surrounded or they're enclosed by intracellular membranes. The word cytoskeleton is probably not the most complex word you've heard about. Skeleton rings a bell and cyto comes from cell so cytoskeleton, the skeleton of a cell which is the structural framework of every cell and in prokaryotes is completely absent but in eukaryotes on the other hand is quite complex and so it's present and it's actually a structural framework of thin protein filaments uh, which are used or have the function of cell shape uh, cytoplasmic organization intracellular transport and movement but I want to write them down the three basic types of protein filaments because they're going to be very important not only for molecular cell biology but in other studies you're going to see them several times so I'm listing them right here microfilaments intermediate filaments and microtubules and also important to mention that I'm ordering them by thickness so the thin ones or the thinnest ones going from microfilaments to microtubules being the thickest ones Hopefully you're still energized and awake for my last topic, the last topic of comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, cell division. And in prokaryotes, we see a process called binary fission, which actually the chromatids are separated by attachment to the plasma membrane. This is how this cell becomes two in prokaryotes. 
binary fission. Meanwhile, in eukaryotes, you have probably heard about mitosis and meiosis, biology, basic biology. If not, we're going to do more tutorials where we're going to go into detail about mitosis and meiosis. And here, the chromatids actually are separated by the spindle apparatus. Uh, and the spindle apparatus is, uh, of course, comprised of microtubules. But we're going to deal with that in more detail in a different tutorial. But you have a grasp now. And here we end our um, tutorial on the comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. I believe these are the most uh, important or relevant uh, key notes are on comparison between these two types of cells, especially for if you're taking molecular cell biology at this point. Um, and it gives you a quick review also, um, especially if you're going to take an exam. Um, and hopefully I was helpful and uh, let me know what I can improve because I'm a medical student like most of you guys or I'm a student period. So I'm learning as well and let me know what I can improve for next time and hopefully help you um, understand this material or other type of materials in a better way or form. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.